Okay, so we're gonna get right into this. I record this one time, it took me 18 minutes and with everybody's crazy schedule, I just can't do that to you. So I'm re-recording it. Uh, I'm gonna make this very fast. I'm Ryan Esdor, uh, I own Superhuman Lab. I've been working on athletes for the last, well, I started when I was 21 and I'm 39 now. So I'll let you do that math. I'm not gonna read all of these. Um, I'll send some slides. So if you want to, you can read them but I'm gonna try to burn through this a little bit quicker and just make some quick talking points. So feel free to read things as I talk. We're basically just gonna go over mobility training. What is it? How is it different from stretching? How's it different from yoga? And then the two big things, injury prevention, how do we reduce the risk of injury? And then overcoming injury. I know some of you guys have kids who are already injured and it's affecting their season. And it's also, we've invested so much in their skills training to this point. We just want to see them hit that peak level. Uh, my goal is to, to give athletes a simple, measurable movement practice to detect red flags early on to reduce the risk of injury and the side effects of sport. The side effects of sports, uh, an interesting one, because we forget when you're highly specialized, we always say there's a quote that I love from a great coach. He says, the cost of high performance is health. You are going to take a little tread off the tires when you are soaring high. Okay. We want to soar high, high enough that we get a sunburn, not so high that we, we get incinerated. Okay. So that's, that's one of the things we have to always manage, especially in season with athletes. My philosophy. Anything added to a sports program must earn its spot on the roster while not interfering with the program's goal goals for the season. To create camaraderie within a team is no easy task. Okay, so we can't be disruptive towards that. Also, you guys have taken many coaches have taken previous seasons, no matter how the last seasons have gone, you've stacked so much experience to get to where you are now. We can't just be interfering and tinkering around and hope to make things better. So anything that I do with an athlete, I'm constantly asking myself, can it be refined? Can it be reduced? What's the most important thing I can give them right now for the highest impact? We don't want to just do busy work. Uh, below, and again, I won't go through these except for one will be the first one. These are my eight factors within a mobility program i call it mobility program because i just wanted to create a difference that it's not just stretching passively it's not just yoga um a lot of us who work with athletes where we have to be complementary towards strength uh and, and also fit into a program we just use mobility as a kind of catch-all for a movement-based practice the one i'm going to go over as an example just so again to make this quick is an impingement, it's really kind of a misnomer. Very easily, if you arch your back and you have back pain, that is happening on the, this will be the back side, the closing side. Now, what is interfering? Well, we just know things are being squished. Things are being pinchy in this direction and they're being opened in this direction. So it allows things to kind of squish back and forth a little bit. If I can figure out are things happening on the closing side or the opening side? I have a better framework of what we do, what we need to do to address the that that pain provoking symptom. And that's a lot of in season training that we do with athletes. What is mobility? We have to have some measurement. So what we do is we take athletes through a thing we call controlled articular rotations. It allows you to determine different compensation patterns that an athlete may have allows you to know, do they have enough range of motion for sport? How much range of motion does, how much range of motion does an athlete need? We always say they need enough for sport plus a little bu buffer. Okay. So we want to make sure we have that in that they're not just cheating movement. Okay. You cheat movement, you compensate long enough. Eventually you just run out of options. The best athletes are the best compensators. So we have to be real careful and just kind of go piece by piece, part by part with them and go, how can I improve just a little bit today at each joint level to increase the, the amount of total expression they can, they can present us joint specific. 
if I said go run, throw a football, but you can't move a joint, we're probably not going to get too far athletically. Also, I would say joint damage, joint injuries tend to take you out longer. You can think of meniscus, ACL, things of that range. Some of them are preventable. Some of them aren't as easy preventable, okay? Nobody said sports was going to be a, uh, a damage-free uh, silo, right? It's We try to do our best, but contact sports, things do occur. But what really kind of keeps me up late at night is the preventable. What could we have done to prevent this, this injury? Uh, joint specific again, because a hamstring grade one or two means it's still, it's still pretty much attached, maybe some bruising. You can still play that season, but we can definitely think of some athletes who have had a joint related issue and they may, may have been out for a season, may have required surgery. Also strength complementary. Athletes, I mean, we got to keep them strong. Okay. We can't just reduce, uh, we can't just create ranges of motion and not complement it with strength that could create its own vulnerability in and of itself. And I would say threat responsive. And what I mean by threat responsive is when we start to detect things are going a little bit outside of a, outside of the lines, we need to start to have some tools to respond. I always tell people when I work with athletes, if you stop me at any point, and say, what are you doing? I should have a really good answer for you at any point in the session. The next slide you're going to see is an example. Uh, one will be mass training by a football coach. Uh, you'll see a lot of it's very slow. The slow speed is to a few things. It's to uh, help them not cheat the movement. It's to give them a variable that's not in their normal training. We call it training outside of the groove. Just dosing in a little bit of different things can almost uh, help create just uh, can help from the initial wear and tear that we create through day to day sport. There are different levels to mobility training. We have, this is level one, which is gonna be slower just using the body. Then eventually we can add resistance bands, weights, we can make it go faster, okay? That's more uh, of an athletic feature we're trying to, trying to create. A lot of the slow stuff, we're just trying to offset the side effects that come with sport. So I'm gonna play a little video for you. Start lifting up. Keep that same distance between your knees. Let them slowly rotate. Slow, more space, Parker. Good. Keep it going. Control it, chest up. Tight back. Control it, control it. And we're back down. Start lifting up. Keep that same distance between your knees. Okay, stiffness. These are the three things I really want to talk about. Stiffness being a primary one of them. Stiffness is power production. I love a good stiff athlete. That tells me they can sprint and they can jump. The only time I really want to reduce stiffness is if they are having a history of, of muscle strains, muscle tears, uh, to where they, they just, they're, they're missing time on the field. They're missing practice. They're having to take reps off. Now we need to make a decision how to reduce stiffness. I'll cut to the chase. You pretty much do it by uh, changing speed. You increase speed, short, fast reps, build stiffness. Reduce speed, very, very slow, reduce stiffness. Every athlete has a different need there. Stress shielding. This I would say this is my most important piece right here that I really want to hone in on. If you have a scar tissue, it's, it's disorganized. It goes in directions. It's hard for the body to utilize it. And so stress shielding says all the surrounding tissue will create this kind of protective pathway so the damaged area doesn't have to really work. And it doesn't really work because it's, it, it's hard for force to pass through it because it's, it's, it's squiggly, for lack of a better term. So what we do is we change the speed and we definitely increase effort to what happens is the surrounding tissue, it fatigues, it gets tired. And then that less confident underutilized tissue will then to have to start participating. And that's how we do tissue remodeling. That's how we create the goals of how do we change tissue uh, through time. And then degrees of freedom, uh, eventually it's more about compensation. You can't move where you can't move. We just want to increase degrees of freedom to give you options. I can't make you a better athlete. I can only give you more options and then you can layer all your skills on top of it. Okay. And then lastly, 
uh, class structure. Here's here's just kind of what I have played out for you guys. 45 minutes. It's a magic number. You tell a young athlete it's an hour. That's a lot of time. They have to balance school, sport, social life. So it's 45 minutes. I'll hang around 15 minutes afterwards. And if they want to ask personal questions within what they have going on, happy to answer them. The way I see it, you have a high demand day, a low demand day, or a combo. You can do it two days a week, high demand, low demand. You could do or just do a combo once a week. High demand is where we're really going to get into that previous thing about the stress shielding, reducing stiffness. You're going to be sweating a little bit. It's going to take some effort. Um, not going to be easy. Even our best athletes struggle here with, with our high demand days. Low demand days is our active rest. Okay, we want to take the demand on the body, on the central nervous system, reduce it so they can recover for their next rep, uh, rest. We do a little exercise we call non-sleep deep rest. It's just a relaxing thing. It's a little more breathing. Um, athletes really love this day. And if we run out of time, we can do a combo thereof. Okay, that's it. Uh, this is just a little brag piece. Uh, if you've got your fill, you can stop now. I'm not gonna go too heavy into this, but just so you can get a better idea of what I've kind of done in my career. Um, again, I would say I've made my career off of siphoning information from people who are way smarter than I am. Uh, lived in Atlanta for a while, had some great mentors with a lot of athletes. Um, even tonight, as I watched the Kansas City Chiefs Ravens game, I got a guy I worked with in 2022. He's on the offensive line there tonight. Um, so that's just been my, my love, my passion, my specialty. Uh, anyways, I will uh, end this. Send me an email. I'll put my phone number in the email if you guys have any questions. All right. Have a great night.